So in this video, we're going to talk about multi-stage amplifiers. So sort of why they're used, uh, what they're used for, and why we need multi-stage amplifiers and not just single-stage amplifiers. So let's say that I'm working at a circuits company and my boss comes in and he says, hey, Jordan, I want you to design me an amplifier with a gain of 100. And at the output of that amplifier, there's going to be a resistor. It's somewhere between 1 kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohm, but uh, we just don't know right now. So uh, get to it. And I don't care if this amplifier is inverting or non-inverting, so it could be plus or minus 100. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, plus or minus 100. And I'm like, okay, great. Uh, I know how to do this. I've, I've been taking a circuits class and I've been watching some YouTube videos. Uh, I know that we can get some gain from a single transistor and uh, a single resistor. And this is just our, you know, our standard common source. Uh, let's just say C s if i can write it uh for a common source and so uh we know that the gain of this amplifier so we have some input and we have some output uh and the gain the voltage gain is approximately just equal to gm of the transistor times rd and we went over in previous videos what these values are now i i know my boss cares a lot about uh power consumption so i i don't want to design this circuit with a whole lot of uh, of power. So let's say that my GM is a uh, hundred, or let, let's say that it's one milliamp per volt. Uh, and so if I want a gain of a hundred, uh, in this case it's going to be negative a hundred because it's um, it's a, a common source amplifier. Then that means I need a an RD of a uh, hundred kilo ohms. And so that's that's great. So I've got my I've got my finished amplifier. It's just a one hundred kilo ohm resistor. And then a transistor with uh, a GM of one milliamp per volt. And let's just assume for now that uh, we can manage to bias the transistor to give us that that GM. And I've got some uh, VDD. But now we run into a problem because uh, what happens when we attach a resistor to the output of this amplifier? So let's say that it was, uh, in fact, one kilo ohm say we have a one kilo ohm resistor, what's the gain now? So what's our AV nu? Um, well, if, if, you do the, if you do the circuit analysis, or you can just see that, well, now this one kilo ohm resistor is in parallel with this 100 kilo ohm, uh, because in, if we're worrying about small signal gain, then this VDD just becomes ground. And these two resistors are in parallel. So now we have a resistor that's uh, say approximately um, one kilo ohm. It's going to be like, I don't know, 990 ohms or something. So this is our new equivalent circuit. It's about one kilo ohm. And we've got our transistor uh, with our, our GM is one milliamp per volt. And we have apply some input voltage. Uh, but now what's, what's our gain? What's the gain of this circuit? Well, it's just GM times whatever resistance is at our drain, which in case in this case is one kilo ohm. So that's one kilo ohm times one milliamp per volt, which is one volt per volt, or negative one because this is a, it's an inverting amplifier. Okay, so that's a bit of a problem because when I just designed the common source amplifier above, I designed it to have a gain of a hundred uh, but now it has a gain, or negative 100, but now it has a gain of 1 just by attaching this load resistor. And the reason is because, well, that load resistor is acting, is, is just in parallel with my, uh, my drain resistance. And so uh, this, this won't work. This is a, this is a terrible design. My, if I were to give this to my boss, I'd probably get fired. And so what really is the, the problem here? Why is this, why is this occurring? Um, well, if we, if we draw out the circuit model of our amplifier, and I'm going to draw it as a voltage instead of a, um, a current source, we know that our, our original gain was, this is 100 uh, volts per volt, or it's, it's negative 100, but just let's pretend it's 100. Um, and then we've got our drain resistor, which was 100 kilo ohms. So this was our equivalent circuit. And then we've got some uh, input voltage, which has a, an 
the input resistance of the circuit is infinity. So we, we don't have to, we don't really have to worry about it in this case. I love MOSFETs. MOSFETs are great. Um, so the problem is that when we attach a resistor to the output here, um, this is our output voltage. So this, this node here is, is V out. Uh, the problem is that when we attach a load resistor here and say this is one kilo ohm, um, then what we have is a voltage divider. So our amplifier initially had a gain of 100 volts per volt. That's sort of the, you know, to call it the internal gain if you want. Um, but then we've, we're dividing the output voltage uh, to RL over 100K plus RL. And in the case of RL being one kilo ohm, that's one over 101, which is uh, much, you know, we're, we're basically getting rid of all of the, all of the gain. So our output voltage is V in times a hundred, because this is our, our dependent source hundred has a hundred gain of a hundred. Um, so this is the voltage is hundred times V in, and then it gets divided. So we have a hundred divided by a hundred one. So this is approximately just V in. And so how do we fix this problem? Because I don't particularly want to get fired today. Um, well, there's another way of thinking about it, and that's in terms of output resistance. Uh, so output resistance of the amplifier. So if I draw the circuit model of my original common source amplifier, I've got you know some input voltage V in. So V in, which is relative to ground, that's at the amplifier's gate. And then I amplify that by, in this case, it was negative 100. So we've got a dependent voltage source. And you can draw it in terms of current sources and understand this in terms of, of current dividers. But you know, I, I like dealing with voltages because that makes that it just makes life easy a lot of the time. Uh, and then we've got this output resistance or Thevenin and equivalent resistance. In our case, it's about just 100 kilo ohms uh, because it's the drain resistance uh, and we're ignoring the, the MOSFET um, RO for now. So we can think of this as the model of the amplifier proper, sort of the thing that we designed, right? The, the, we had a 100 kilo ohm resistance here and we had our GM of one milliamp per volt, which gave us a, a 100, a gain of a hundred. So this, we can think of this, what's inside this box as our amplifier, the thing that we designed. And then we're attaching a load resistor to this, and uh, above we said it was one kilo ohm. And the output voltage is just the thing at the load resistance, so that's that's this voltage here. And you can see that above, um, it's just this node here or this node here. Um, so we're attaching a load resistor, and what is the output voltage here? Well, it's just the input voltage times uh, the gain, which is negative 100. And then we're doing, we have a voltage divider here. So we've got one kilo ohm over one kilo ohm plus 100 kilo ohms. And so that's very close. This, this is almost just one over 100. So this is approximately just minus Vn. Uh, so that's terrible. You know, we, we wanted it to be uh, 100 times Vn, but it's basically 1 times Vn. 
it. And so what are we going to do about this? Well, the problem is that this output resistance is too high, right? The output resistance is huge. It's 100 kilo ohms. If the output resistance were, for example, 10 ohms or even 100 ohms, then this wouldn't be nearly as much of a problem. Because if we had a much smaller input resistance, then this voltage divider would be uh, 1 kilo ohm over 1 kilo ohm plus maybe 10 ohms. Uh, and this number then would be very close to 1, and so our gain would be about uh, 100 times, or our gain would be about negative 100. And so that's that's what we want. What we want is a small output resistance. Uh, but the problem is that a common source just won't give us that, right? If we want a high gain, um, if we want a high gain for our common source, we know that the gain is just gm times R, rd and this is approximately equal to the output resistance so if we decrease our output resistance then we would have to increase our gm if we wanted the same um if we wanted the same gain and sorry this should be negative gm rd and you know that's a perfectly valid solution we could just increase the gm and then this would be less of a problem because we could decrease rd um but there's another thing that we can do because there's another circuit, another single transistor amplifier that has a much lower output resistance, and that's the common drain amplifier. So if we have our VN, we have some source resistance, and then our output voltage is here. We know that the, the gain of this circuit, which we went over previously, is uh, roughly one, you know, not, not exactly one, but it's GMRS over one plus GM rs and so let's let's say we have exactly the same components as in the previous uh example so let's say that this rs um let's say that this guy was 100 kilo ohms and the gm of this transistor was one milliamp per volt and pretend that you know we figure out the biasing and this is in fact the gm and this is the rs of this transistor well what's our gain initially um well initially it's very close to one because we've got 100 over one plus 100, which is you know very close to one. In, in circuit design, it's, we would say that's equal to one. Um, so what happens when we attach a, a load resistor to the output? So we add uh, a load resistance here. Let's say this is one kilo ohm. What happens? Um, well, our new gain, you can. there's a couple ways to think about it. One is in terms of, well, now RS just becomes the parallel combination of RS and one kilo ohm. And that's a perfectly valid way to think about it. Um, the other is that, well, we have our amplifier model, which is, we've got V in, and then, so we're applying some input voltage, and then our gain is approximately one, so a dependent source one times V in. And then our output resistance is also, uh, in this case, it's, if you remember, it's just the value of RS in parallel with one over GM. Uh, and GM is, we said, one milliamp per volt. So it's 100 kilo ohms in parallel with one kilo ohm. And so this is our, which is about one kilo ohm. So let's just say that's the output resistance of this circuit is one kilo ohm. One. Um, and then we're attaching our load resistor here, which we said was also one kilo ohm. So now our output voltage, um, or our, our new gain, the V out, oh, sorry about that, um, the V out over V in, uh, before it was one, but now we've got this voltage divider here. So it's one times one over one plus one. So one kilo ohm over two kilo ohms. So our new gain is about uh, 0.5. And that's a lot better than in the in the last case. So in the last, when we, we were dealing with a common source, initially we had a gain of 100, and that went down to 1. And this time we had a gain of 1, and it went down to 0.5. So the effect of adding a load resistor to a common drain with the same exact values of GM and RS, like same, uh, same everything, it was 100, 100 kilo ohms and one milliamps per volt. Uh, the common drain is much more um, robust to changes in the load resistance. And that's because of 
it has a much smaller output resistance. So one kilo ohm instead of 100 kilo ohms. And in general, it's the output resistance is approximately one over GM. But we couldn't just design our circuit out of a common drain because it doesn't have any gain. Um, so what, what, what do we do? Well, we want the common source because it gives us gain. So say we've got our 100 kilo ohm resistor here and our transistor. So we've got, we've, we want our initial common source because that gives us uh, a lot of gain. But then we set what we're going to do is we're going to send that to the output or the sorry, the input of a common drain. So we've got and let's say that maybe this was 100 kilo. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we've and let's say the, the GM of each of these transistors is about one milliamp per volt. So one milliamp per volt and uh, one milliamp per volt. And this is our this is our final output, so V out. So this is where we attach the load resistor. So if we do this, if we put these two circuits together, so the output of our first common source becomes the input of our common drain, then we can have our cake and eat it too. Uh, because we have a gain um, of our, our, the gain of our first stage is, we said 100 or about negative 100, which is what we designed it for. And the gain of our second stage is about one, so our total gain um, at the output when we don't attach the load resistor is about negative 100. Uh, and when we do attach the load resistor, so let's say we add our load resistor of 1 kilo ohm right here. Uh, when we do attach the load resistor, that gain goes down to negative 50, or up to negative 50, but let's say down to negative 50. And that's a lot better than our initial design where the gain went from negative 100 to negative 1. Um, so this is a pretty dramatic improvement just by adding a second stage. Uh, and it costs us very little. Like we, we have to add a little bit of current because we've got another transistor. We've got, you know, another transistor, another resistor. But uh, relatively speaking, it's not, not that much to pay for a, a pretty massive improvement. And if we wanted to do even better, then we could increase the oh, we could increase the GM of this transistor. So maybe we increase it to 10 milliamps per volt or 100. Uh, and then instead of our gain going from 100 to minus 50, it would go from 100 to about 90. Or in the case of 100 milliamps per volt, we go from 100 to about 99. And depending on the level of robustness that you need, um, depending on how small you want your output resistance, uh, that'll determine what, uh, what the GM of this transistor you would want.